let's find the reaction forces on this overhanging beam. This overhanging beam is pinned supported at point A and at point C is a roller support. There is a point load at point B and point D which are 50 kN and 40 kN respectively. To solve this problem, step number one, we are going to draw the free body diagram for the overhanging beam and this is the free body diagram. Instead of solving the given question, we are going to be solving the free body diagram. Step number two, forces going up is equal to forces coming down. The reaction at point A and the reaction at point C are all going up. And we are going to add up all the forces that is pointing up. Next, we are going to consider the forces pointing down, which are 50 kN and 40 kN respectively. When we add up all the forces that are pointing down, we are going to have 90 kN. Step number 3. Forces to the left is equal to forces to the right. From the free body diagram, the horizontal force at point A is pointing towards the right and the force pointing towards the left does not exist, hence is zero. The horizontal force at point A is zero, hence we just obtained one of the answers. Step number four, we are going to take moment about point A. Let's recap. This is a clock and this is a beam. Any force that will push the beam to turn towards this direction will be going with the clock convention and we say that the beam is moving in the clockwise direction. But if this beam is pushed by a force and the beam moves towards this direction, which is opposite the clock convention. And we are going to say that this beam is moving in the anticlockwise direction. Moment is defined as a force multiplied by the perpendicular distance, not just distance. The force must be acting perpendicular to the distance of the point where you are taking the moment from. We are going to be applying this concept to the free body diagram in step number four that the anticlockwise moment is equal to the clockwise moment. Mathematically, the summation of all the moments at a given point, here we are choosing point A, is equal to zero. When you take moments about any point, all the forces acting at that point will be assumed to be zero. The horizontal force and the vertical force is assumed to be zero and does not exist at this point that we are about to take moment. And we are now left with 50 kN, 40 kN 
and the reaction at point C. Let's consider 50 kN. And we are going to assume that the 40 kN and the reaction at C does not exist. If the 50 kN load acts on the beam with every other force being constant, it's going to turn the beam towards this direction, which is the clockwise direction. And for the moment, the 50 will multiply 3 because that's the distance between this point and the point where we are taking moment from. For the clockwise moment, we just obtained 50 multiplied by 3. We are done with the 50. Next, we are going to consider the 40 kN. And we are going to assume that the 50 kN and the reaction at C does not exist. In the absence of other forces, the 40 kN force will turn this beam in the clockwise direction, about point A. Remember, we are taking our moment about point A. The perpendicular distance from the 40 under consideration to point A is 9. That is 2 plus 4 plus 3, which is 9. And we are going to have 40 multiplied by 9. And this moment is acting in the clockwise direction. And we are going to add this to the clockwise moment. We are done with the 40 kN force. Next, we are going to consider the reaction at point C. And we are going to assume that the 50 kN and the 40 kN force are constant or does not exist. In the absence of other forces, the reaction at point C will push this beam in the anticlockwise direction, about point A. And the distance from point C to where we are taking our moment from is 7. Hence, we are going to have that the reaction at C will multiply by 7 in the anticlockwise direction. 7 will multiply the reaction at C in the anticlockwise direction. The next step is to solve for the reaction at C in this equation. Next, let's pull up our calculator to solve for the reaction at point C. We are going to click the division sign, then 50 multiply by 3. We we'll close the bracket plus we we'll open the bracket. We are going to have 40 multiply by 9. We are going to close the bracket. Then at the denominator, we are going to have 7. Next, we press the equal sign. We are going to change this to decimal and we are going to have 72.86 kN to 2 decimal places. Now that we have obtained the reaction force at point C. Next is to go back to step 2 to find the reaction at point A. Substituting into step 2, the reaction force at point A is 17.14 kN. Considering the free body diagram in step 1, we now have all the reaction forces acting externally on the overhanging beam and we are done with the calculation.
if this video was helpful don't forget to subscribe like and share to locate other helpful videos follow the link on the screen i will see you in the next video lesson